Donnie and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business, we can help. Thursday and all of our guests today, including Farhan, standing by. Brought to you by the Vancouver Giants. Giants would like to thank their fans for their support this season at the LEC. Can't wait to welcome them back for 2023-2024. Man, time flies. Oh. Get your season tickets uh, for next year now at VancouverGiants.com slash season tickets. As we bring in from TSN, as we do most Thursdays, Farhan Lalji. Thank you for doing this, sir. How are you? I'm good, boys. How are you doing? Good, good, good. Just before um, we talk about uh, SFU and the NHL and all oh. that, friend, I'm going to ask you to get out your crystal ball. Who do you think is going to win the Grey Cup this year? <laughs> <laughs> stop it. Stop it. For the third week in a row. Are you going gonna to ask me about Vernon Adams, too? And, and sure. Hey, why Rourke? not? Okay, let's do that. Nathan too, Rourke. Guys. Start with Nathan Rourke. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking forward to going to Jacksonville to watch him at training camp. That'll be fun. Oh, really? When you go, oh. you're, you're going to see him? Yeah, either either training camp or mini camp. One of the two. We just oh, haven't well. decided which one. But uh, yeah, we'll be there. I would imagine probably the first few days of training camp at the end of July. So, oh, nice. Nice. looking forward to that. Realistic expectations for him in Jacksonville behind Trevor Lawrence. I know we've asked you that before, yeah. but uh, yeah, your but it's been a while. We've let that we've let that breathe a little bit, right? Yes. So you know the. the I, I know he's made a good impression down there from people I've talked to, but at the end of the day, they did bring back C.J. Beathard, and uh, so he's going to be have he's going to have his work cut out for him to compete for the backup job, right? And so, uh, will he be able to to get to a point where he can be on the roster for some games this year? We'll see, but I think that's the the goal for him, and um, certainly he's he's done his part, but it, it's going to be tough for me. I, I want to see what he looks like in preseason and in com and in their mm -hmm. combined practices because in preseason. You're going to see very little of Trevor Lawrence, and Nathan Rourke's going to get a big, big body of work. So I think um, just seeing how he performs, and I have no reason to believe he's not going to perform at a high level. Right now, he, he's about to get married, and then he's going to be back here oh. in Vancouver for a little bit to work with Rob Williams and see his family and get some training done before getting back down to Jacksonville. So we will see him here a little bit locally, but... Um, you know, for for me, the preseason is everything because that's when he's going to get a chance to to make a real big impression. Meanwhile, the Lions uh, training camp going on in Kamloops. How would you describe a Rick Campbell training camp? Well, I think you know Rick has evolved as a head coach over the years, right? He was the, you know very very no nonsense uh, when he was in Ottawa and earlier when he was the first head coach. But now I'm not going to say he's he's loosey goosey or you know the second coming of Devon Claybrooks or anything like that. I think he's still got some of that in him but then when you get to a point where you've established yourself and you feel really good in your own skin i think you you allow your personality to shine a bit so he's tried to make it fun at the same time you know you saw the the javon katoy moment with the field goal where if he makes mm -hmm. it they, you know this group does 20 mm -hmm. push-ups if not this group does it there's a bit of that right and i think he's found himself becoming more adaptable like all of these guys have had coming out of covid and they've had some some smaller uh, issues as it relates to air quality. So they were able to get, yeah. you know, they got inside yesterday, you know, so there's all that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, I think he knows who his team is now, right? And you went through a tough time two years ago where you just had so many rookies that were going to have to earn spots and now they can pick and choose, right? So I, I think he's a little bit more discerning right now and, and has a pretty good sense of, of where the battles are going to be won and lost here. Farhan, the last few weeks, a lot of negativity about SFU and the football program, but can I say that it sounded like uh, some, um, at least way more positive in the, in the, in the past week. Uh, are we going to get someday that football program up and running again? Yeah, I think we are, and it has been more positive primarily because we finally, finally have a legitimate process. And I touched on this when we talked last Thursday that you know, we've got – uh, the, the group with Richard McLaren and Bob Copeland leading the way on this special advisor consulting process. And I had a chance to meet with Bob Copeland, who I knew from before. He was a former athletic director at Waterloo, and we, we've spoken together at some similar events. And um, I, I think there's a real legitimacy and a real earnestness to look at a pathway forward to 2024. And I think the university is open to that. And I think that's great. However, um, I think there needs to be something in 2023. I think that matters to this program and it matters to these kids because, you know, you, we've kind of, if there is going to be a 2024, 
there was really never a reason to cancel 2023. So there's a lot of these kids that are still in limbo right now. There's a lot of uncertainty around their situations. They, they don't have legitimate options to transfer to. Some of them are upperclassmen. And if you transfer, the school that takes you in is only going to accept a certain amount of your credits. And, you know, you don't want to, if you're close to graduation, you don't want to be starting all over again. So uh, not all over, but you don't want to take a year a year back, right, just for football. That doesn't make sense for, you know, guys that aren't going to make millions of dollars playing this sport. So I think there has to be a way for them to, to get some exhibition games this year. And as much as anything else, I think the university needs to send an olive branch to these players because while the special advisor was, was good – in terms of the broader football community and the alumni and stakeholders and, and you know, people like Amar Doman, for the players themselves, they need to know that this is getting back on the rails. And, for you know, I think they should open their locker room. I think they should allow these kids access to uh, training logs and, and training programs from the uh, strength and conditioning staff because in court, the university said they're varsity athletes still and get the benefits of that, but they've been denied some of those things, right? So if they could just – Again, extend an olive branch and make these kids feel a little good about the process because I know that they did meet with the with the advisor and generally the feedback was, you know, mm. just not enough urgency, a little bit disappointing and, and maybe too little too late, just as far as certain selected kids are concerned, not, not bigger picture for the program. So I'm, I'm really hopeful the university can see the reasoning. And, and big picture, for every kid you lose right now that's going to transfer – it makes 2024 that much harder. So give us a chance to have some competitive moments in exhibition games and an olive branch here in 2023. You've been to Arizona many times, covered a lot of big events mm -hmm. there. Uh, the hockey, Coyotes, uh, what's, uh, what are your thoughts on what's going on there with – the Coyotes, is it even a hockey town in your eyes? You've been there many times. No, it, it, it never has been. And I remember when, you know, they had a Blackberry, Jim Balsillet. I know, Donnie, you've oh. still got a Blackberry. They, <laughs> you Hold know, on a second, Farhan. You're the last person I know <laughs> that had a Blackberry. <laughs> no, so, yes. Bob McKenzie and Pierre Lebrun. Oh, okay. Okay, right. those guys had Blackberries after I did, and, and I did have one for a long time. I was forced to get, uh, yes. get, to get an iPhone, and it was a good thing. But uh, I remember back when he was looking at buying the team. I mean, we're talking like 15 years ago now. I was in Arizona covering that story. And when you look at just what this franchise has been through uh, in terms of different owners, different locations, different situations with the city of Glendale and eventually being essentially kicked out and having to play in this little tiny college barn and all of it, it's, it's so bad. And through it all, Gary Bettman has just doubled down, doubled down, and doubled down some more. And I wonder if he actually would ever admit a level of embarrassment or I got it wrong, right? Like, is Gary capable of that? Because, Gary, you got this wrong and you've had it wrong for around 20 years now, right? And you've just continued to just say no. So uh, it's, it's unfortunate what they've been through. I'm curious to see what it's going to look like if they wind up in Salt Lake or if they wind up in Houston or, or some of these other cities, uh, you know, and, and what it does eventually to the expansion process because it, it certainly appears as though this team's days are done and they should have been done long ago in the Valley. Any, any uh, uh, suggestions as to where they could move? Look, Kansas City is the latest uh, city that's been talked about, thanks to Patrick Mahomes yeah. yesterday. Yeah, that'd be good, and maybe he'll put some money into it and, and get it done. You know, I, I think they should move to Anmore and be in your backyard because you've got <laughs> enough space back there for a brand new arena. That's kind of what I'm thinking. See, as soon but, as I uh, gave you I, the I was, Blackberry I shot, to, I knew you'd come back. I wasn't, and I wasn't supposed to tell everybody that you lived in a palatial estate in Anmore with security and <laughs> a moat, right? Yeah, yeah. but people uh, <laughs> know that. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay, but. Um, I, you know, I, I don't know because none of them are hockey towns, right? Mm, yeah. Salt Lake has the Olympic experience, and, you know, from a time zone perspective, I think some of that stuff matters. You don't want to put them in Sacramento in the Pacific time zone and, and, and have to realign and things like that. Houston's obviously a big city that has some successful sports franchises in the other three major sports. You know, is there room for the NHL? Probably. So I, I don't know what the right scenario is, right? There's some bigger markets. There's some markets where it could be a little bit higher up the queue in terms of importance, but... Go to Quebec City, man. They want it. They want it. And yep. if, if you tell them you're going there, they'll if the arena that they built a decade ago is outdated, they'll probably rebuild another one, right? So there, there's a real passion for it. And as we saw when the Jets went back to Winnipeg, it's a winner, right? It's a winner. And you don't have to go through this. You can have some stability. So, uh, And I get why it's all about market size, but they have to have some interest in hockey. And I, I'm not sure any of these other ones do. So, yeah, it's, it's going to be tough. 
Fran, uh, thanks for this. That Blackberry movie's out, by the way, right? Yeah, now, it right? just the, came out. Yeah, is it really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. About are you silly in it? In the start. <laughs> no, <I'm, laughs> hey, again, oh. you're the last person I know to have a Blackberry. Yeah, I had a Blackberry Priv, and I did well by it, but then at the end, it got smoking hot. Like, I'd literally put it in my pocket, <laughs> and it would burn. And then wow. TSN got to the point where they said, look, we're not going to give you any more product support on, <laughs> on the tech side for this. If you want that, you got to get an you got to get an iPhone, you got to get an Android. Then they just sent me the iPhone without me even asking, and oh. it's been good. Yeah, oh, too bad. You got a free iPhone. Brian, thanks for this, <laughs> my friend. Appreciate it. See you, boys. See you, Hendo. Yeah.